The American Homebrewers Association, which turns 40 this year, is offering a free book with every membership gift card purchase made during November and December. Head over to homebrewersassociation.org to see the free book options and learn more about the benefits of AHA membership. Spoiler, the books are awesome and the benefits are abundant. Head over to homebrewersassociation.org to see for yourself. Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, November 15th, 2018. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, Steve Wilkes, proprietor of Steve's Brew Shop, joins me to taste our fifth in the Hop Sampler series. This time, it's Centennial, Citra, and Galaxy. What will we think of each? And will we be able to guess which is which? If you go to basicbrewing.com, you can find archives of our audio and video shows, our DVDs, our brewer's logbooks, and other basic brewing gear, including our tie-dye silicone pint and a new shirt, which I'll talk about in just a minute. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Basic Brewing and find our show page on Facebook. We have a cool Basic Brewing app on iTunes and Amazon.com, and we're found all over the place where fine podcasts are served up. And if you do us the favor of rating us on iTunes and maybe leaving a nice comment, they say that that will help new listeners to find us. And uh, if you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basicbrewing. And thanks to all the uh, subscribers who are helping us out. If you go to basicbrewing.com, oops, nope. (laughs) If you go to patreon.com slash basicbrewing, you can see a long list of stuff you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Too many URLs in my life. Uh, <laughs> if you are a supporter of Basic Brewing on Patreon, uh, you already know that the Mockley video episode will be released on uh, Friday to the general public. But Patreon supporters have uh, access to an early release of that show, um, along with my recipe for Mockley. Uh, Patreon supporters of the $5 level have access to an extended 20-minute behind-the-scenes video that shows more details of the process, including uh, some Steve Wilkes jokes that he cracked during the bottling that uh, that you don't hear on the on the regular show. <laughs> never never a dull moment with Mr. Wilkes around. Uh, thanks to everybody again for supporting us. Very exciting news, or at least it's, it's exciting to me. We have a new shirt in the Basic Brewing Shop dot com store basicbrewingshop.com it was designed by our friend and and fellow home brewer Casey Lohman she's the one who had designed the uh uh it is is a four letter word shirt uh it uh, it features a this new shirt features a rainbow of uh, beerish colors going from carboys to different styles of beer glasses it's kind of hard for me to explain uh, it's very cool, though. Very, very clever and very eye-catching. And uh, it's on the store now. And uh, since there are more colors than our usual shirts, uh, they are a couple of bucks more. But they're still inexpensive. You know, T-shirts are, are pretty pricey nowadays, especially cool ones. Um, in fact, it's such a cool shirt that maybe your significant other would wear it if it were found, say, under a certain tree. <clears throat> I'm getting letters coming in for our annual disaster show, uh, which is good. Every year, Steve and I get together to read tales of homebrewing woe and sometimes redemption following the woe. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll put together a little prize goodie bag for our favorite letters. You can send those disaster emails to james at basicbrewing.com. And not sure when we're going to get together. We haven't scheduled. It's hard for, us to, for Steve and me to... To schedule stuff, so I'm not sure when we can get together. So get those letters in now. You heard the deal from uh, the AHA at the uh, top of the show on gift cards, but I want want to let you know that the AHA has extended an additional offer to those who join or renew their memberships through the AHA banner on basicbrewing.com. So if you do join up or renew through my link uh, through the end of the year, you'll get two awesome brewing books uh, brewing Classic Styles and Wild Brews. So, you know, two books instead of uh, out of the one. Uh, if you've already got those books, they would make uh, great stocking stuffers as well. So uh, check out uh, 
the AHA banner on the right-hand side of basicbrewing.com. Click on that and use the code BASICBREW18. BASICBREW18 at, uh, when you click on that link. I'm on your side if you're, you're tired of people talking about Christmas even before Halloween or Thanksgiving. <laughs> it gets earlier every year. Uh, but uh, we will be taking the next week off from po- uh, posting the podcast because of Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're able to do the same and spend time with your family, I hope that you are safe and happy. Um, I hope you're safe and happy uh, wherever you are. But it, se- it seems like uh, every week it's another disaster or some sort of... Uh, you know, weather or fires or whatever, putting people out of their homes. And uh, boy, I hope that uh, I hope that you're out of harm's way wherever you are. Let's skip to a more happy note. I get an email from our sponsor, Poncho of Poncho's Brewing Lab, saying he's putting the 20 gallon water cooler on sale for 125 bucks until the end of the year. And if you use the code BBR at ponchosbrewinglab.com, that's P-A-N-C-H-O-S, brewinglab.com, you'll get an additional 15% off. You've heard me talk about Poncho's Keg Cooler. It's the 20-gallon water cooler that you can get with a built-in tap that's designed to house a 5-gallon corny keg. Poncho says he designed the keg cooler as an alternative to jockey boxes, which he found to be a pain to work with. Uh, Poncho's keg coolers are great outside in the summer, and you know what? They're just as great inside in the winter. Your beer keg stays cold in the cooler with ice in the warm rec room or hunting lodge or wherever you're having a gathering. Uh, And you don't have, uh, you know, it's a cooler, so you don't have condensation to deal with. Uh, Poncho's keg cooler now has a stainless steel retractable intertap faucet. And the Keg Cooler Pro comes with a Sankey tap, so the cooler can be used with a sextal or quarter barrel Sankey keg, uh, in addition to homebrew cornies. And you can customize yours at ponchosbrewinglab.com. And uh, don't forget about that $125 deal on the water cooler itself. And don't forget to use BBR to save 15% on yours at ponchosbrewinglab.com. Boy, I've got a lot of business stuff this week. Let's uh, take a look into the mailbag. Nate from Maryland says, I'm just getting started in brewing and had an odd brewing question. Has anyone brewed a beer with whiskey backset? That was a new one to me. Uh, when making whiskey, you make beer and cook off the alcohol. The stuff left in the pot after the alcohol is gone is called the backset or spent mash. Most of this gets thrown away, but some distillers take a portion, up to 50%, Nate says, of the slightly acidic and flavorful liquid and add it to their next batch to alter pH and add flavor. This is where the term sour mash that we see on some whiskey bottles comes from. Nate says most of this stuff gets thrown away, so it shouldn't be hard to find a small distillery and get a couple gallons of the spent mash to experiment with. Plus a sour mashed sour mash... Sounds fun to say. (laughs) It is kind of fun to say. Uh, Nate goes on to say that he doesn't think he has the expertise to try it himself. But I I say you don't have to be experienced to try crazy stuff. I encouraged him to go for it. Uh, I did find a post on Reddit where someone asked the same question about four years ago. And there was some conjecture on there about how it would go. Most, Most were skeptical. Uh, but I didn't find any posts about, uh, you know, people actually brewing with Backset. So I'll throw that question out to you. Have you or do you know of anyone brewing beer with whiskey Backset? Is it worth a try or would it just be nasty? Uh, drop me a line and let me know. I also got a couple of emails from our friends and sponsors, Desiree and Dave from High Gravity in Tulsa. Big news here. You'll, you'll have to act fast on this deal, but High Gravity is offering free shipping on High Gravity's in, uh, Ingredient Kits until this Friday, November 16th. So if you go to highgravitybrew.com, uh, for example, a couple of their signature kits that are currently featured on the uh, homepage are Hold Your Hat American Saison and Love Potion, which is a Scottish ale. Mmm, both of those sound fun and tasty. Uh, High Gravity is also 
Big news, uh, taking orders for bootleg biology yeast. You know, those tend to be on the funky and sour side. So those are, those would be a fun to play with. That's in addition to uh, imperial organic yeast, which High Gravity also carries. Uh, and they also have the standbys as well. Uh, and, of course, High Gravity has a wide variety of electric brewing systems to fit all your wants and desires, from single to three-vessel systems, and from five gallons all the way up to two barrels. Take the pain out of propane this brewing season by going electric at highgravitybrew.com. And if you use the code EBC75BB, you can save 75 bucks off your electric brewing purchase. It's at highgravitybrew.com. Okay, it's been a while since we've done a hop sampler show. This is our fifth one. I won't go into the uh, ups and downs of our off-mic lives, but Steve and I <laughs> haven't been able to arrange a get-together recently. Shoo! Um, luckily, we were able to carve out some time recently to sample Centennial, Citra, and Galaxy. Steve Wilkes, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thanks, James. It's a pleasure to be back. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done one of these, uh, the hop samplers. Life has gotten in the way again. Well, yeah, hey, I, I know people enjoy, enjoy nothing more than us complaining about how busy and <laughs> <That's right. laughs> our personal circumstances. But, you know, things happen. They certainly do. <laughs> uh, so it's, not, it's good to get back together and good to, to taste uh, some fun beers. Uh, so what we have here, and this is the fifth time we've done this, and, and I, I've done it basically the same every time. I take three quarts of filtered water, and I, I uh, warm it up a little bit. I add one pound or 450 grams of Pilsen Light Dry Malt Extract. I bring it just to a boil, which is around 208 degrees Fahrenheit when it starts to you know bubble up like it's going to boil. I shut off the heat, and then I add, this time I added half an ounce of each of these hops, because these are fairly high alpha yeah. hops. And then I do a 30-minute hop stand where I just set the pot aside uh, and for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, I chill it down, and I add 3 grams of uh, Safael USO5. And uh, I get an email, a couple of emails, asking how I measure that, and I've got this very fairly inexpensive but very sensitive it must be like a jeweler's scale or something on amazon hmm. i forget the brand but it does measure in like hundredths of a gram so wow yeah so i put a piece of foil on there i tear it t-a-r-e it the scale and then i just measure out three grams of of yeast and and dump it into the into the one gallon jug fermenter uh, and then these are primed with um, the carb drops, you know, the, oh, little, yeah. the little candies, not mm -hmm. the little aspirin-looking things, but the candies. Right. So what are, your, what are your overall perceptions about the beers? Uh, well, I think they're all perfectly well made. In other words, there's, there's no uh, brewing flaws in them. Uh, beer number, I don't know how to go into this. I, I thought all three were pretty good. Number two has a weirdness about it that, um, like your word was earthy a minute ago, but um, but all three of them are very different, and that's good. In other words, we've got these three different yeasts that I, I mean hops, excuse me, and I'm expecting different flavors from them, and indeed I'm getting different flavors from them. So um, I don't know. That's about it. They're 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 nice beers and. I'll be anxious to see what, what you think of number two as well. Mm -hmm. I should say that we have, uh, this is a blind tasting. We have uh, did a double blind procedure. Uh, where we've randomized these beers and we put tape on the caps that identify which is which. But uh, we have Centennial at 9.9% alpha acid, Citra at 13.3% alpha acid, and Galaxy at 14.7% percent alpha acid so again fairly high alpha hops um and only using half an ounce in the you know in each of these you know sort of one one gallon batches now number one let's talk about our perceptions of each of the uh, of the, the first beer at least 
what do you get from number one? It It's kind of the most uh, normal beer-like to me. In other words, it it has a very familiar hop characteristic to me. It's not too, it's not over the top citrusy. It's not over the top, you know, earthy. It's not, it's just kind of like what I've always thought beer should taste like or grew up thinking beer tastes like. It makes me think that it's centennial uh, because it's it's kind of the most Cascade-like in a way. Um, and I always think of centennial and Cascade as kind of having the same basic flavor profile it's nice it's a it's a nice little beer um if i brewed that as a you know a five gallon batch of beer i'd be perfectly happy to serve it to friends and family Mm -hmm. um it's not uh it's not as over the top in hop characteristic as the other two beers i'll put it that way Mm. to me i mean it's it's fairly nicely balanced i think um to me it's the most lemony Mm mm-hmm a second ago, I took a I took a sip of it, and I was like, "Wow, that's a lot of lemon uh, in there," and you know, almost like a lemon pledge kind of a thing <laughs> to me, um, which I think is good. I think it's I think it's delicious. Um, the bitterness is is well balanced uh, for this beer. It's a nice you know American pale ale. <laughs> <Cha-ching>! <laughs> I think we just made a sale at the store. <laughs> Whenever that cash register rings, my phone goes off. <laughs> Your son Chase is watching the store today. Yes, he is. <laughs> Christmas times are coming, folks. <laughs> we got to pay for this dental work I just had done. <laughs> Keep those cards well, and letters coming in. <laughs> Address it to Doctor. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Doctor Payne, be gone. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a. I think it's a. I think it's a delicious beer. I maybe I'll hold off. Maybe I'll hold off on on guessing which is which. Yeah. But but shall we shall we read? Uh, I, I <clears throat> glean some information from pops popslist dot com. I have this. It's been sealed in a mayonnaise jar <laughs> on Funkin' Wagnall's porch <laughs> since Tuesday. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to read that. I'm missing the two. So if it. If it comes out a little weird in my vocality, <laughs> I'm missing a tooth and I've had some beer. <laughs> Centennial. Centennial. Centennial owes its existence to a mix of Brewer's Gold, Fuggle, East Kent Golding, and Bavarian hops. Mm. Developed in 1974 and released in 1990, Centennial was pioneered by Charles Chuck Zimmerman and S.T. Kinney at Washington State University. It is at times referred to as Super Cascade because of its similar uh, citric characteristic. Centennial is a much celebrated hop in its versatility with its depth of bitterness and forward aroma, two characteristics that balance each other beautifully. Mm. Super Cascade. So in my brain, I'm thinking, which one is the most the most like Cascade? Um, mm. We're sniffing now. We're smelling I don't smell as good as I used to. No. <laughs> In more ways than well. one. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, I have two contenders. Yeah, I have two contenders too. That uh, that might fit those those descriptors. <clears throat> well, it's interesting just talking about all three beers because we don't know what any of the hops are in them. Um, I kind of tend to agree that I think number one is very nicely balanced, which could just be the the luck of the draw, meaning you put in a half an ounce and it just happened to, to balance well for that, that strength of hop. Uh, but it's, it's just nicely balanced. It's a nice drinking beer. I do. I agree with your lemon comment that you, you kind of put that thought in my head, but yeah, I, I get that. So number two, okay. number two, when I, when, when we first went through the, <laughs> the first tastes, we got to number two and both of us kind of, kind of went, mm. yeah, <laughs> not, not what I was expecting. It's uh, it's just got it's just got this huge kind of like big earthy dirt clawed lump. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> In a nice way. Well, okay. So the, the descriptors of dank and earthy, they all come to mind, but it comes to mind in a pretty big way on mm-hmm. this on this sample of beer. Um, I'm not sure I'm crazy about it. Maybe. If you'd used a quarter of an ounce in this recipe, 
So I think sometimes it, you know, if we've, if you've used a, a hop that shouldn't have been used in that quantity in that volume, that's not really the hop's fault. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to kind of defend that that the beer is not poorly made, it's not infected or anything like that, but it's. I don't think it's in balance with itself. I don't think the hop is in balance with itself. Yeah, I agree. There's a, there's a lot of the. It may be the most bitter of the of the three to me yeah i think it is the most bitter and um it it is citrusy but it doesn't have a pronounced there's nothing very uh clear about it it's kind of a muddy muddiness there's a there's a fruity character in there that maybe it's uncle arthur <laughs> <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> oh, Samantha. Oh. <laughs> the center square. Yeah. <laughs> but, and maybe cherry or something like that. But then, but then there's a, there's a little, there's a bit of citrus as well. But then at the end, it's like after you swallow, it's like, ugh. Yeah. It's dusty or dirt, almost dirty. Yeah. Literally earthy in that it's, it's, there's a kind of a, dirt character yeah i agree yeah you, you said it as well as i could say it dank dirty dusty uh not you know i wouldn't i wouldn't serve this beer to anybody yeah except, it's, except, except in this setting <laughs> yeah i mean it's not like you say it's not in it's not contaminated it's not i don't think there's a flaw and we've got a, another bot once we once we uh, reveal these, I've got another bottle of it that you know we could taste it. That second bottle to see if it's a, a flaw with within the bottle. Maybe it's an, a contaminated bottle, but their bottles are all treated the same. So I don't know. It's a, it's just not it's not not my cup of tea. It just tastes kind of old and cheesy. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. That, well. You and you and I, uh, I I opened when I brewed this. I brewed with these hops. I opened up the Galaxy, yeah. and the Galaxy was it looked old to me. It looked yeah. brownish, and it smelled a little cheesy. Yeah. But then when I bottled the beer, it tasted fine. Right. Well, um, that's exactly right. And we pulled those hops. I pulled them, and I contacted the distributor. And got credit for them yeah. and quit selling them. But during the time in that, say, 10-day turnaround time before we kind of understood what was going on, a couple other guys brewed with them. And their beers were great. Mm. Like they brought them in like, yeah, this is really good. And then you kind of reported back that you felt like it was okay too. And so I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. But I'll... I won't be surprised if number two turns out to be Galaxy, and we'll know why. Yeah, I'll I'll feel kind of weird if it turns out that it's not. Yeah, I guess we'll, we're going to find <laughs> out. But um, but yeah, those those hops, you know, were sealed from the manufacturer. I just have a feeling that they were old when they were packaged. I I don't really yeah. know. There's no way to know. And the and the distributor was fine. They were very cool with it. So uh, we just. Pulled them off, pulled them off of our, or, or maybe that lot got got mixed in with a, maybe that was like last year's fireworks, you know, maybe they got mixed in, yeah, with that's what I, accidentally yeah. or who knows what happened, yeah. But, uh, so I'm just really curious about this, and it makes me, I, I kind of didn't want to let my mind go there because I was hoping that they would be okay, but I have a feeling that we're going to find out that it's a Galaxy. Well, should should you go ahead and read the description of a sure. Galaxy while we're at it? Yeah. Um, it says it's descended from German variety Pearl or Perle. Mm -hmm. uh, Galaxy is a unique Australian breed of hops that has the distinction of sporting the highest percentage of essential oils in the industry. Mm. I didn't know that. Um, it is an amazing, it has an amazing citrus, peach, passion fruit aroma, especially when used as a late addition. The flavor is often quite intense upon production, but mellows as it matures. Mm. Um, Galaxy enjoyed her. Wow, it's 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 a female. Uh, 
Well, Galaxy, all, all the all well, the that's right. all the binds that produce cones are female. So that's right. Yeah. Okay, Galaxy. <laughs> I was just interpreting pronouns in my mind. It's okay. <laughs> Galaxy, I would have said it, but... Or, or they. Yeah. Galaxy enjoyed her first commercial production in 2009 after nine years of testing and quickly became popular both in Australia and overseas. Okay. So. All right. And and we have to say that these this beer was brewed. Today is November 8th. Mm-hmm. These beers were brewed on uh, September 6th. But they've been in the, once they were bottle conditioned, like a, a week or so, I put them in the fridge. So mm-hmm. that should have, and they don't taste stale at all. No. Um, and who knows if they would have tasted more more fresh and hoppy, you know, a few weeks ago, but they still taste good. Yeah, they do. And um, so when I was taste, testing, tasting the beers uh, along the way, number three, which I'll take Se- a sip of. Segway. <laughs> It's very pleasant. I quite like it. Mm. I think it might be my favorite of the three. Mm. And it's the one that, in terms of description, matches Galaxy the most. Yeah. It's definitely peachy and passion fruity. You know, um, it's really nice. It's what I would expect Galaxy to be. So, um, and, and I really do like that one quite a lot. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, now those warmed up a little bit. Boy, the the that tropical fruit flavor is really coming through. Mm-hmm. It's not near it, when I first tasted it when it was very cold. I thought, oh, that's grapefruity, but now it's more complex. It's more of a soft tropical fruit flavor. It's not as bitter, maybe as as the other two to mm-hmm. my to my perception. But yeah, I think as far as the flavor is concerned, I think you're. I'm leaning toward. Going with you and saying that it's my favorite of the three flavor-wise. Now, um, and I would also say based on the written description, forgetting the kind of um, overpoweringness of it, but number two, which is the one that we weren't so crazy about, it on paper seems to be Citra. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's really got almost that... Um, uh, dried uh, the white part of the grapefruit rind. Well, re- read the description of Citra while we're on. Okay. Oh, we haven't read that one yet. No. Okay. Well, let's do that. <laughs> we skipped. Sorry. Uh, American Hop Citra was created by John I. Haas Inc. and Select Botanicals Group Joint Venture. This is from Hopless.com, by the way. And uh, the hop breeding and the hop breeding company. It was selected or released to. <laughs> I've got to learn how to read. <laughs> a four-year-old boy could understand this. Can you go out and get me a four-year-old boy? <laughs> Thank you, Groucho. It was released to the brewing world in 2008. Now one of the most coveted high-impact aroma hops in the U.S., particularly among craft brewers, it boasts a complex lineage that includes the likes of Hollitower Middlefrew, Tattening, Brewer's Gold, and East Kent Golding. Citra, as its name implies, has a strong citrus profile. This is largely credited to the very high um, myrcene. Can, I can't pronounce myrcene. Myrcene. Uh, we'll say that. Yeah, it has an extraordinary flavor profile of grapefruit, and that's what it reminds me of. Number two does lime and tropical fruits, but despite its high alphas, brewers often warn against its use for bittering, which is considered by some to be harsh and undesirable. Ah. Now that again on paper, that's number two. And the more it's warmed up, the less that it's still there, but more fruity characters are coming out. So, it do- <clears throat> wow, what a what a conundrum! If only there were a way we could find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we want to lock in our our votes here? What to, what do you say? What say you of number one? Which one do you think it is? I'm going to go with number one being Centennial. Well, watch me be, be dead wrong. I'm going to go with number one is Centennial. I'm going to go with number two is Citra. And I'm going to go with number three is Galaxy. Well, I think number one, that lemon character makes me want to say Citra. Okay. Just because I think when I think of Citra, I think of Citrus. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Um, you're probably right. Oh, I don't think so. I'm going to say number one is Citra. 
what is Centennial again? It's Super Super Cascade. Hmm. All right, I'm going to say number one is Citra, number two is Galaxy, number three is Centennial. All right, so you got both hands. Okay. So number one is. Well, I think I think you're right. I don't know. I just number one is Centennial. You got that right. I got that one right. Number two, <laughs> this is what I'm really not sure about. Number two is Galaxy. Oh, I'll be darned. So, so I got right, that. Got I got that, that one right. right. And our suspicions of the Galaxy being old and right. not tasting right, right are founded. And so now we know that this one is indeed Citra. So, um, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what that's what I knew I should have done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But but I was so taken by how much the Actually, the Citra tasted like the description of Galaxy mm-hmm. that I thought, well, I'm just going to do that and see, see if I'm right or not. So, but that's uh, not actually not surprising at all in that Citra is extremely popular. Mm. And here's, again, a reason why. Because yeah. it was so nice. It's delicious. Um, and then the Galaxy, uh, <clears throat> now it makes me want to do the same thing with some fresh Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Should we I've got that other bottle of Galaxy. Yeah, Should we just take good. a quick a yeah. quick taste to make sure that it's just not a bottle issue? Yeah. <clears throat> so what they do in uh, homebrew competitions every now and then if something tastes weird and there's another bottle, you know, uh, the uh, judges can ask the steward for another bottle to make sure that uh, you know there's not just a bottle issue. Uh, so teamwork. Yeah, tastes the same. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's very instructive. Hmm. Remember when we thought all hops were brown? (laughs) (laughs) That that was the natural state they came in? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) They all look like cork. (laughs) Wow. I'm so um, taken with how pronounced that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, boy, it, it, it really... It pays to have fresh hops for sure. That is no kidding. Wow. And I, you know, I took a picture of those hops at the time and sent them to you and said, "I these don't look right." Right, and that's what. And then I forwarded that that onto the distributor, and he agreed with me. And so we just yanked them, and you know, they gave me a credit, and that was the end of that. But um, wow, I'm really quite surprised at how. Uh, well, unpleasant it is. Yeah, this one, at least, I may be getting palate fatigue already, but this mm-hmm. one is not as off-putting as that first taste, but there's still that dirty, earthy stuff going on in the background. Yeah, so um, what about, so with Belgian beers, they, you know, two years old, four years old, the cheesy, mm. uh, you know, it's so it's so interesting how something that might be desirable in one way is completely undesirable in another brewing instance. And, um, well, the, the cheesy hops that I think they use are, are not as high in alpha acids. First first of all. So there's maybe, maybe the, maybe they're not as off putting because, you know, those alpha acids, there's not much of them and they fade over time. And, and, uh, I don't know. It's just yeah, me I don't know either. I'm talking just... out of my nether regions, but uh... <laughs> well, you drink enough of this beer, and you'll be talking out of your nether regions. That's for sure. <laughs> and Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> oh dot. Oh dot. <laughs> oh, oh, when you're when you're near me, darling, can't you hear my SOS? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Abba, Abba, as it was never intended. <laughs> Okay, so are you well, are you sticking with the sit number three, the Citra being your favorite? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, I like it quite well. Uh, the Centennial one is fine, but again, it, it's kind of exactly what I expected it to be. It tastes like the beer that I grew mm. up drinking. Mm. Um, so nothing about it was off putting. Nothing about it was really outstanding. It's just a just a good bottle of beer. Just a good solid pale ale. Yeah, exactly. And then the, the number three, which was the Citra, 
really shined with with all those flavors again that I was expecting on paper to be Galaxy, but mm-hmm. boy, what what a really nice uh beer that made. Yeah. Yeah. And so once we get a new shipment of Galaxy, it'll be next year. Oh yeah. yeah I was told that, you know, that's it. There's <laughs> there's no more. We can't replace them. They come out once a year and that's it. Mm-hmm. So but a year from now we'll do it again. Yeah. We'll we'll put it back on the hop hop sampler list when we get there you go. new ones. All right. Well, this is fun. Uh, I appreciate your help again. Thanks, James. Well, thanks again to Steve. You can find his homebrew store at stevesbrewshop.com. It is rare nowadays that we have issues with the quality of ingredients. You know, most most of the time, it's every, everything is good stuff. So we still don't know what happened to that shipment of Galaxy, but it's good to know that the distributor made good on it. And I look forward to next year's crop and to the next edition of the Hop Sampler, whichever ones we choose. I still need to go to the store and uh, and get ingredients for that. So I'll be interested to see what Steve suggests. Don't forget to send in your disaster show stories. Uh, if you have those or brewing questions or show suggestions or just want to say howdy, Write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form at basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. Special goodies coming your way. <laughs> Sounds like I was about to sing. I'm not. <laughs> check that out at patreon.com slash basicbrewing. Be sure to check out our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering, and decoction mashing, and introduction to wine kits. You can find them all on our site. Somebody asked me, uh, are they region encoded? And they are not. They are not region encoded. So wherever you are, if you still have a DVD player, you can play them. You can also get a free Basic Brewing bottle opener with any DVD combo. And you can check out our Basic Brewing shirts in the store too, including our new Brewing Rainbow shirt. You can find our log books where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Check all that out at basicbrewingshop.com and take a look at our silicone pints as well. So until next time, until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer. Production help for Basic Brewing Radio and our website is provided by Kelly Dotson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long. So long.